Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, your host, broadcasting li live from Los Angeles. Uh, today, topic is going to be about the collective consciousness or collective um, unconscious, <laughs> unconsciousness. <laughs> so I'm going to get into that and explain it to you in details. But for the moment, let's, uh, we're going to do a meditation. Uh, in this meditation, we're going to be the conduit of sending uh, light and love across the globe and um, putting ourselves at service, service of the divine, her, her majesty, to use us as, as vessels of spreading love and light and, and uh, hopefully helping our fellow brothers, sisters from all over the world and bringing some peace for them and uh, helping them out to settle down and calm down and hopefully they won't be so identified with the collective consciousness. So we're just gonna um, close our eyes, bring your attention inwards. And I want you to bring your attention to your heart area, heart chakra. <clears throat> And um, visualize that your heartbeat from your heart chakra, your center of your chest area, this area, that there is a ball of light. And with every breath you take, this light starts to spread. So as you, excuse me, <coughs> I'm still uh deal, dealing with a bit of a coughing so as you're breathing in and out this light begins to increase um and take over so just relax and settle into your body Bring your attention to your heart chakra and see your heartbeat, your, the light from your heart chakra. And as you're breathing in and out, the light which is generated, the love that's generated from you, you're the source of it. It's spreading and taking over your body. By now, your entire body has become light, is love, is generating a love frequency through light. And as you're breathing in and out, this light begins to emanate and spread. And it's taking over your apartment, your house, your room. And it keeps spreading. And it's magnifying. With every breath you take, it gets stronger. And it's spreading more. And this light carries specific frequency. It's the codes that it's carrying... And if you're centered and you're in your heart and you're in state of self-love and you're away from fear, then you're transmitting the codes through your meditation of calmness, of being collected and balanced and self-aware to your environment. And 
Now as you're breathing in and out, the light is spreading and has taken over your entire house, apartment, office, wherever you're at, and it keeps spreading. And it's touching every person, every everything that is it comes in contact with. And transmitting this information, this calmness, this love, this unity, the oneness to everything that touches. All the time you're very centered within yourself and your attention is on one point, which is your heart area. You are in this state of self-love and self-acceptance. You're in this place of total unity and you have a sense of complete oneness. There is no separation in this moment. You're present, you're here, you are available, you are love, and you are a conduit of love and light frequency by the great spirit is acting through each and every one of us. And this light keeps getting stronger and it's emanating throughout the entire area that you live. And it's taken over an entire neighborhood and it keeps getting stronger. The more you stay centered, conscious, aware in this moment, in total trust that all is well, the stronger this love and light gets and its transmission. Remember that the power of this love and light is in your ability to surrender to the moment, to love yourself and accept yourself and allow God to work through you. Now, as you're just breathing in and out, this love, this light has taken over the city that you live in. Its magnitude is huge, powerful and it's spreading. It's transforming. Changing things. And if it comes across anyone who is ill, 
suffering from the virus, from illness, is changing them. Healing them. Bringing light, bringing love, bringing wisdom and intelligence and information helping him to become whole and complete. Remember in this moment you are a spiritual warrior and you are a servant of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, serving Lord God Allowing yourself, your body, your psyche, your emotions, your intelligence to be of service, of light. Most of us have been waiting for this moment. And here's your moment. This is the time. And as you're just focused, available, open, this love and light has taken over the entire state, province, region that you are residing. And it's getting stronger. And it's diffusing negativity, is bringing awareness to unconscious, collective unconscious. Bringing comfort, turning fear to love, diffusing anxiety. And it's disrupting all negative patterns. It's breaking through them. Forcing them to dissolve. Because love at the end always wins. And as you are in this state of total surrender and service, this love, this light has taken over the country you live in. All started from one point, from your heart. Now you have reached an entire country And it's getting stronger. And as you're just dissolved into the love and light. You have lost all your senses of being separated. The power of love and light grows and 
has taken over the continent that you live in. It's gone beyond limitations of just the country. It doesn't understand borders. It doesn't understand walls, mountains, physical limitation. It penetrates everything and goes beyond and transforms. As long as you stay pure in your heart, your intention is holy and you're at service, this power will use you And the love and light keeps growing. And now it's gone beyond the continent. It's gone global. The power of your love, your light that comes from your heart, that you've become the conduit and a servant, an instrument of love, allowing Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, Lord God, the Grand Spirit, shining through your heart and has taken over the planet Earth. But this love and light is greedy, it wants more. It wants to go beyond this planet, into the galaxy. It just does not settle for this planet. It wants to be spreading to other galaxies. It has no limitations. It keeps going and bringing love and light and friendship and unity throughout the entire universe. The entire universe. To other beings, other civilizations, other realms, other dimensions, not even physical dimensions, going to other dimensions. From the worlds below to the worlds above, uniting all, spreading its power of clarity and wisdom and intelligence sharing it with all different realms and dimensions.
just as you are right now. Know that your very presence is precious. It's magnetic, it's majestic, and it's emanating the divine love and light throughout the universe and beyond. All started it from your heart, your beautiful heart.
slowly, slowly. Your consciousness from a complete expansion begins to shift and gently come back towards your physical body while you're still a beacon of light
slowly, slowly come back. It's nice when we're together and we all meditate together and we're are there's no agenda. <clears throat> we collectively have one intention and we fall in inwards and we dive into our inner being and it's away from the mind chatter all the stories that the mind creates all the fears and anxieties that the mind projects so you push through that and you come back into yourself and uh, suddenly everything's quiet and there is no story in this very moment. Regardless of what is going on in the other world, you find silence and comfort balance in the inner world and you re recognize that there is no separation because there's no mind and it's very groovy and uh, naturally you say, I always want to be in this place. This is where I want to be. This is so great. I wish I could do this all the time. Right? You ever say that to yourself? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. The good news is this is your natural state. It is your very natural state. So you don't have to do anything for this. This is who you are. And I know some of some of you may think and say, well, it's easy for you to start to say that, or it's easy when we're together, this happens. Um, you don't understand. I have kids. I got, I'm married. I got issues. I have to pay my bills. Um, that's not how it is in normal life and blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, this is your very natural state. So it, regardless of what is going on anywhere, 
in the world or your world, you have access to this all the time because that's who you are. This, this part of you reveals itself in the, despite the mind. So, <clears throat> At the present moment, what is going on with all these global distraction that is going on right now, the global challenges that we're going through, uh, and it's a global turbulence. So, um, of course, there's all these uncertainties of these thoughts of what is going to happen, what's going to happen to me, what's going to happen to the world, what's going to happen to my children, what happens to my future, and all these questions come up. And uh, that, that happens when you, and if you're not really established into the present moment, if you haven't done the work and uh, you don't really know yourself and you haven't discovered the space within yourself that in the present moment here, right now, away from the noise and the chatter, it's very flat, it's very calm, it's very quiet nothing is really going on in the center of yourself as we just experienced it in our meditation you went to this very deep quiet still silent loving space you've done it many times so, once we start to recognize this place and we dive, in, we dive into it, the more you become familiar with it, also we recognize that, yes, all these challenges are happening, all this stuff going on, the utter world is in chaos right now, and it's in a turbulence, but in the same time, it is a great opportunity for awakening. It's a great opportunity to transcend to a higher level of consciousness. We collectively as human beings having a tendency to fall asleep it's uh, very easy when things are going well, excuse me, <coughs> and we're not being challenged, we fall asleep into this comfort zone and we start to take everything for granted as everything's always gonna be fine and dandy as long as I get whatever I want and I'm not challenged. But that's not how life is. And, and that's not how growth comes. Uh, quite often for us to go to a higher level of consciousness and to expand and to awaken, let's use this word, we need to be challenged. So somehow the rug needs to be pulled from under our feet. Uh, otherwise, we have a tendency to just fall asleep and become a robot and just be robotic with everything we do and keep repeating the same pattern without any awareness of it. Uh, falling into the same emotions and same reactions uh, without being paying attention to it because everything is fine and we're getting whatever we want and uh, 
There's no need to question anything. And uh, but when something happens, let's say you're challenged by a health issue, um, you lose someone, you're financially challenged, uh, you're emotionally challenged, your relationship is rocky. Um, and there's a number of different kind of things that can happen in life is when we kind of like get shocked. So shock treatment, in fact, it's essential in our spiritual growth to be shocked, to wake up from the sleepy patterns. And so what is going on around the world is the collective, collectively, majority of the uh, people on the planet, they're in this collective unconsciousness. And what happens is they're looking for comfort, they're looking for uh, the lives to be better on the other outside so and when you are, don't know about meditation you haven't worked on yourself you're not aware of self awakening you're not aware of uh self expansion and you have this sense of separation that you experience and everyone around you is fortifying this sense that you're separated. So the collective is really glued to what is going on in the outer world. And so they're relying on the media. And what the media does is basically media news sell based on emotions. So if there's strong emotions, then the new news become uh, valuable. And of course, it's a lot of it is based on fear and anxiety. So, and they're not even maybe aware of it. People who are running the show with the news media, it's basically uh, how could they just get your attention? and sell the news and the advertisements and everything. And that's got to be on drama. And that's how it works or creating strong emotions in you. So when you're unconscious and you're not aware, what happens is you fall into it and you really buy it. And you're really glued to it. And what it does is starts creating more anxiety, more fear, more uncertainties in you. So it just kind of spirals down, you know? And so you may not be glued to the TV or the news, but maybe your partner does. And all they do is they're sitting in front of TV or the computer and they're listening to podcasts or listening to CNN or different kind of BBC or whatever channels and just being fed off of the news. And it's very addictive. And so what happens is, is like your emotional body gets addicted to the stuff. And it's like sugar or uh, sugar products or caffeine. So you may not be aware of it, but then you get addicted to it. And so you need, you want more because that's what feeds the parasites inside your body. So, so you're craving, craving more of it. So what happens is we're not just dealing with a, a physical virus, a global virus that 
the pandemic, we're also starts to contracting a mental virus and uh, which is far worse than the physical virus. And that's what's happening right now around the world is that majority of people on the planet, because they're not self-aware and they don't do meditation, they don't work on themselves and they're they deriving information and from the utter world and they're projecting their happiness and their well-being on the other world events. So if things in the world go well, they imagine that they're doing all right. And when things in the other world doesn't go well, they are very, very much affected by it. So, and start reacting. And we can see what's going on right now. So you want to be very aware not to fall into this trap because it's a huge trap and it can really spiral and drag you down into this abyss, into this dark place that you will feel really helpless and lonely and, and uh, as if the world, your life is going to come to an end. You have to be aware of it. This is a time to be sharp and not fall, not becoming a robot and doing this robotic stuff, whatever that is, be alert of everything and especially yourself. Be an observer of yourself, watch your behavior, watch your reactions how you react, how you're emotionally reacting to things, especially stimulation from the outside, the news, people around you. So, because you're the one who's working on yourself, you're the spiritual warrior, you're the healer, you're the holy one, you're the one who wants to become whole and complete and you're working on yourself diligently and you're doing a good job because you're here. But you also have this responsibility of being really awake. You can't just fall asleep into this collective unconscious on consciousness that is dragging the humanity, you know, into this dark place. So what you want to do is you want to recognize it. And in that recognition of it, that what is going on and stay in your center, not, uh, not, fall into the trap, stay, refuse falling into the trap, stay into your center. It doesn't matter what's going on in the outer world. It's irrelevant once you discover the inner world. You begin to discover your power of who you are and what you've got. Your power your heart, the heart chakra, that no one can take away from you. It's impossible, but you could be hypnotized to imagine that you are helpless, imagining that you are insignificant and you're separated and you may be finished, you may die, you may be destroyed. It's in an imagination. It's something you can be hypnotized to believe it, but it's not true. There's nothing true about it at all, not even for a moment. 
So that's what happens to the co collective, the collective uh, consciousness, majority of humanity. They fall asleep into the dream. And then they just become like a robot and they're reacting to whatever is going on. Yeah, when we are projecting our state of consciousness, our well-being, and we're projecting it on a world outside of ourselves, and we have no awareness that, first of all, the world outside of yourself, it's an animation of what is going on inside. So, you know, it's like inside out. It's like of not realizing, okay, the outer world is a reflection is what's going on in my inner world. Now, there are people who come and say, okay, well, if I learn this, I can manipulate things. So I'm just going to work on my inner world so, and so I can manifest things. You got to be careful with that one too because that's what is being sold right now in pseudo-spirituality is to teach you how you can manifest things and get what you want. And that's a dangerous area because getting what you want is just not material stuff. It's like, how can I maybe manipulate other people to do what I want them to do or manipulating somebody to love me or it's not just trying to manipulate things to get money or cars or whatever or another home or those kind of things. It's uh, converting people into your soldiers, become your soldiers. So you got to be aware of that. What I'm saying is that the utter world is a manifestation of what is going on in your own psyche. It, so by becoming aware of it, we're not talking about finding ways of manipulation. That's another trap you can fall into. And God knows where that one is going to go. So it's basically what I'm referring to is to become aware of it. And to become, to come here in this moment. Like what happened when we were doing our meditation or what happens when Many different times we've done our meditations together, whether collectively or privately when we've been together. Uh, when we dive into the present moment, when you do that, this is not something I give you. This is not something is being transmitted. This is something just being guided, you know, I'm just guiding you to go inwards and you dive inside yourself. And all of a sudden, expansion takes over. All of a sudden, story of the world is going on outside, disappears, is not here. And you're just in this leveled place. It's flat. It's level. What I'm talking when I say level, I'm not referring to boring, okay? Because I have people come and tell me, well, Zarathustra, 
diving into this place of the oneness is so boring. That's also a trick of the mind is playing this game with you. What's wor what was boring about like the meditation with it? I don't know how much how many of you did you go into the groove? How many of you went into this place of total expansion and comfort and love and silence? Okay? Right. Was it boring? Did you find that boring? Or bliss, blissful. Blissful, yes. Boring. Was it blissful? Okay. Right. So, there's nothing boring about it. It's amazing. And what do we do? You went into, you cut through, you just open the veil, you cut through the BS, the story the mind is playing, and whatever is going the outside, uh, other world, you disregarded the stuff, and you brought your attention inwards to the truth of who you are, the presence now, your being. And then what happens? It's like wow, a complete expansion, equilibrium. It's flat. It's there's no spikes of emotional ups and downs and the worries and the fears and all these feelings of uncertainties of what's gonna happen to me and what's gonna happen to the world. Because when you're unconscious and you don't have any training, you have no awareness, it's so frightening. It's so disturbing. And you can look around, talk to your relatives, your family, your friends, people who are really identified with what is going on in the world and see what is going on to them. They're very miserable. And I'm not saying that there's not a threat out there and there's no virus and it doesn't kill or make people sick. Yeah, it looks like it's getting worse. They're spreading and really affecting a lot of people. I'm not saying that that doesn't exist. We're not being in denial. It does. It does exist, of, of course. But... That is a physical, biological virus. But now it's transmuting itself and becoming a mental virus. And that's thousand times worse than what is a physical virus. Because that would be in your psyche and that will eat you from inside out. If you don't have the support, if you don't have the mental training, if you don't know how to meditate, if you don't know how to come to the community that supports you to keep you still and bring your attention to here and now, it's very deadly and it's very cancerous it just spreads very fast so what you want to do as you're doing right now and you're doing a good job but you want to keep on the path is to disregard the noise the utter noise outside noise and stay truthful and faithful to your inner voice and do the right thing. You know what the right thing is. You've been doing it, but this is the moment. This 
what is going on right now in the world is our moment. This was what we have been talking about it. And those of us who have come to the spiritual path, whatever years you're around, you know, because that's basically what matters. You know, it doesn't matter 100 years ago or 200 years ago. Ever since you were alive and you have come to the spiritual world and you've become self-conscious, that's what's important, really. The rest is just blah, blah, blah. So all of these books you've been reading, all the work you were doing, all these years we were talking about the age of Aquarius and the transition and, and how we can transcend and reach the fifth dimensional consciousness and shift. All of those books and stories and videos that we've been watching and reading and seminars and uh, people we followed and listened to, it's happening right now. This is, this is the moment of it. It's happening in this way right now. Of course, our imagination of a utopian life is that is a different story. It's something the mind creates. Of it's a projection the way we want we imagine it to be. Of course, naturally, we all have that fantasy. But the reality of what is going on is this. This is what's happening right now. It's a global transformation, but it's an inner transformation. Maybe on the other side, other world, nothing happens or whatever. I'm sure eventually things will change as they are. But the focus should be on the inner world and using this opportunity. So you have sort of a choice, if there is a choice, is which direction do you want to go? Do you want to buy into the collective unconsciousness and contract the mental virus of the fear, worry, anxiety, uncertainty that what's going to happen to me or you want to use this opportunity and fuel your inner fire and use it to be whole, to be complete, to be holy and use it for healing. What do you want to do? Which direction do you want to go? Yeah, the herd, the collective is going in that direction. I was never a kind of a person would follow the collective anyway. I was always a rebel. That was my nature. It was like when everybody started doing something, I didn't want to do it. I didn't even know why. I just didn't like to do it. Maybe I did it for a short period of time. I didn't want to do it anymore. And yeah, I mean, on, on our kind, us who are doing this work, there is a lot of pressure too on us because you all have family, friends, and your society, your community, that they put a lot of pressure on you because they're afraid and they're going down this spiral of the collective unconscious of going into this fear, anxiety, 
place and they and you're you know you're the black sheep in the family you're the one who popped out and then they're putting a lot of pressure on you and that's why it's for us it's really vital to meet to come together where we have support because we speak we speak each other's language and we understand because all of us come from this background of that we were very different in a way from our childhood or maybe it happened later on but basically it's the same story where we are sharing with each other of being different in some ways i'm not saying better or worse but you somehow popped you know you were this mushroom that wasn't supposed to pop but you popped so and now we're under a lot of us are under a lot of pressure from our family friends because they're all going down to spiraling down into this dark place and that's not your way so thank god we have this way to c- connect with each other and to support each other that no sweetheart you're doing a good job stay here stay in this place don't don't give in don't give in to the collective unconsciousness to fear and anxiety and uncertainties of what's going to happen stay stay in your present stay here that's our job this is our moment while we're working on ourselves and we're evolving we're going to use the current situation to our advantage you turn the poison to medicine and of course the mind will come and say oh my god i'm so bored which is true you know i can't get together with my friends i can't go to this gathering i can't go to the dance party i can't travel i can't do this i can't do that i can't go to a restaurant and sit down and eat with my friends you, you know yeah it is a weird weird time that you can't even do the very basic stuff that we all used to do right so we don't have that that's taken away because of the circumstances but what cannot be taken away is your perspective that's something no one can take away from you you can shift your perspective and look at what is going on and view it that it's an opportunity for your spiritual growth this is a moment that a lot of our distractions are taken away and we really get a chance to work on ourselves however that is you have time to read books you have time to watch videos you can there's hundreds of amazing spiritual teachers on youtube that you have an opportunity to sit down and listen to their lectures compare them see who you like you couldn't do it before you were busy now you have a chance to do it now you have an opportunity to meditate you have an opportunity to go to the nature and be by yourself take time off and just dive inwards and do go do an exploration of the inner world and explore what's going on because the other this utter distractions are not there so we're not going to view this as a catastrophe we're going to view it as an opportunity for growth so all of a sudden you change your perspective of something was a bummer 
eh, I hate it, I can't stand it, to, wow, I'm loving it, or I'm really going to use it to help me to accomplish something, whatever that is. I always wanted to learn a new language. I didn't have time because I'm always working. I have time to do that. I wanted to study history. Okay, great. You have time. You can watch a lot of great videos or read about it. I wanted to write something. I wanted to organize my poems or my thoughts to write something about my life. Great. Now you have that time to do it. I wanted to paint. I wanted to... create something with my hands. Great. You have the opportunity to do it now. Why not? When I'm talking about doing this work, I'm not saying that you stay home and 24-7 you're self-reflecting and self-reflecting. Yeah, you can do that, but then that can also become very mental. It could be a mental activity. be many different things. You wanted to do a cleanse. You wanted to do a 30-day cleanse. You want to do an intestinal cleanse. You want to do a liver flush. You want to lose weight. You want to work on your body. You want, there is so many different things that you have the opportunity to do it now because you're not distracted with a lot of other stuff. Well, what if there is no future? What if da, 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 the world ends? Well, it's going to end for everyone. It won't just end for you. Well, that takes a long time to fix something or to learn something. It's going to take a year to learn a new language. Well, Let's say you don't learn a new language. What's going to happen in a year from now on? Wouldn't a year go by? A year still will go by. Yeah, you understand? Are you with me? You, you see that? It's a perspective. It's a perspective. You can look at it this way, and it's negative and fearful and catastrophe and boring and horrible, or you can just shift your attention to the positive part of it and make the best out of what you have, because this is the reality right now. You can't sit down and cry about it, what it used to be and, and how horrible it is. This is what is. This is life. How was it if you lived in Europe and it's 1938, 1939, and it's the start of the World War, you know? How was I mean, your continent is about to be destroyed and everyone's being inconvenient in that time. All of a sudden, war took over the entire Europe. What do you want to do? Sit down and cry about it? Or you make adjustments? So... We get used to things to be in a certain way 
and then we fall asleep. That's what happens. We fall asleep. And then existence comes and says, you know what? God comes and says, you know what? I love you and I want to wake you up. I want to wake you up to the truth of who you are. I want you to discover something within yourself that you didn't know it existed. Because you're thinking peace, love, comfort, equilibrium is in the utter world. It's in the economy. It's in the politics. It's in how much money you have and how many homes you have, how successful you are or how great is your family and your relationships. That's where you're investing. But you're not working on yourself. So your well-being is very much depending on what is going on in the utter world. And now I love you and I want to wake you up that your wealth is inside yourself. And I'm going to give you this opportunity to wake up to that, to recognize the kingdom of heaven within yourself, to come to you and recognize the expansion, recognize that you are the one you're looking for and you're not separated. There's no separation. There is no separation. There's never been a separation. Separation cannot exist. It doesn't even exist. It's impossible. It's not there. It's never been there. It's all one. It's always been one. And in investigation of yourself, as you dive deeper inside yourself as your mind starts to quiet and you go beyond your mind then you start to experience that there is no separation because now there is no mind there's no mind creating this illusion that something is separated even you with the virus with anything even you with death, you with life, birth. So you come to this place. This is our opportunity now to recognize it. This is very, very important. This is a generational or a millennium opportunity. This is an opportunity that comes maybe once every thousand years or 5,000 years or 100,000 years. This is, this is a golden opportunity. It's not a joke. It's not about the pandemic and a virus. This is about a moment of the collective consciousness of awakening hundreds of thousands of people. An opportunity that's never been here before. At least I'm not aware of it. And now that opportunity is happening. It's a really huge movement. I hope you realize that. How huge this is. And again, it's a perspective. You can look at it as a total disaster because your mind is so attached to the old model of what it used to be or shifting into the truth of who you are, that you have this opportunity right now that you may pop into recognizing you may be able to separate yourself through the pressure which is there you may be able to pull yourself away from 
your mental activities, your emotions, and your body, and be able to separate yourself. And all of a sudden, in that separation, comes the recognition of that you're, you are expansion, that there is really not a you there. The you is only a thought, it's an I thought, that is only that which is here. This is worth dying for. This is worth giving up the life we were very much attached to because this one thing by itself can free you from the cycle of the karmic cycle, from the life and death of coming and going into this dream, in a way of saying. And a lot of you have played your allegiance, you know, inside yourself. You've said that. I know you've said it. That I'm willing to give up everything. I'm willing to do anything to become one with God. And that's your desire of becoming one with God. Becoming one with that. The final realization. So here's your opportunity. Just like that. And you're not alone. Don't fall into this illusion and this trap that you're alone, you're lonely, you have no support. Why me? Why life is doing this to me? You're not alone. We're all in it together. We're all here. So if anything bad is supposed to happen, it happens to all of us. So what? But I assure you nothing bad in that way that you think is going to happen. Whatever happens, it's going to be for your spiritual gro growth. It's coming out of love. Because you have God in you. That's your true nature. And when you have God in you, you, nothing can touch you. You recognize that. And when you recognize that you have God in you, then you recognize that God is in everything else. Then there is no boogeyman anymore. Anybody has any questions for me? You wanna? Yeah, sure. Uh, Susanna, if you... Yeah. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, I uh, thank you for, for this talk. It's nice. But man, Buddhist, it takes lifetime to silence the mind and get awakened. How... I don't actually have very much question. I, I just have this comment, you know, how can I be certain that this will happen to me? How do I recognize that I am awakened? Do you have any comments or thoughts on this? 
because okay. the Buddhist monks, you know, they meditate 24 seven almost, and they are maybe lucky and they get awake or how do I even know that I am awake or awake, you know? Well, the ego just don't let okay. you go. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you do you think you're asleep? No. Okay. I don't. Okay. So you you know you're not asleep. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So and you know you're working on yourself. Yes. Right ever since I've met you. You've been on this spiritual journey of working on yourself. So if you're working on yourself, how can you be asleep? Okay. Is it it? Yes, it's very simple. Now, maybe you have this idea of awakening or enlightenment of a big bang and no, then... I actually don't. That's the thing. Yeah. That's why I'm very, you know, uncertain where I am now. What is it like what I'm doing? I'm like, okay. meditations are very strong lately and I feel very, very calm. And I was very blessed actually this year. But still everything changing so much that, you know, the ego gets confused. So it's still right. there. Right. So... Okay, first of all, you said in the beginning something about thinking and emptying the thoughts or freeing yourself from thinking. You remember when you first started talking, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do this. It's very, very simple. Okay, let's not make it complicated. Everyone can do it. Just look in here, take a look inside. I'm just pointing out like this. Just look inside your mind. Do you see any thoughts? Do you hear any thoughts? No. And everybody else? Just simply look inside. Is it quiet or if it's busy? Be honest with me, just just let me know, you know, I, I don't have any judgments over it. So you don't have to act cool. I, I want to help you. But if any of you, when you're present and you look inside, is there thoughts or it's quiet? Or maybe something's in the background happening, but it's not grabbing you. Pictures. Pictures are happening. Or pictures, okay? So you're seeing pictures. A lot. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where are you that you're seeing these pictures are passing by and there is an observer watching it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. But the, the, yeah. What, the observer doesn't change. Yeah. I know, but I don't see the observer. I, I don't know how to put myself into you. You don't have to into you know. Well, because that's not because. Pictures are here. Okay. Look, make it very simple. Just just keep it. Let keep it super super simple. Okay. Don't mind fuck with yourself. Now. You are able to hear your thoughts or watch them or see images. You're capable of being aware of them, correct? Yeah. yeah? So you can do that with your thoughts. Simultaneously, you are aware of your emotional spikes. When they're up and down, you become aware of it because it's affecting you, correct? So when some emotional thing happened to you, let's say your friend or your boyfriend or somebody says something to you you don't like, 
you know, they're a little bit, the tone of voice is insulting or insinuating or they're not cool. And all of a sudden it creates an emotion in you. Okay. Are you aware yeah, of it? Yeah. You, 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 yes. you, yeah. You're aware something's mm-hmm. dis- disturbed you. Okay. So yeah. it's the same Susanna or awareness or the observer who is solid is here. This one's not changing. Is aware of all of a sudden of a spike of an emotion. Anger rises or sadness or fear or something or jealousy or you're aware of some something rises. Yeah. What do you have to do for that? You don't have to do anything. <laughs> you're just aware of it, correct? Yes. Now, stay at this place that you're aware. Yeah. Same thing simultaneously is when your mind is very busy, you're aware of it. When you're in a deep meditation, you're very, very calm and quiet, you're aware of it. Yeah. This is who you are. Is a measuring device that is aware of what is happening. And it's and it's always aware. Yeah. This I, I know. And it's like you need I need to remind myself these things, right? During the busy days. But how about the ego? How I am just so eager to get rid of it. Oh, okay. All right, good. That's Maybe a good it sounds one. funny, right. you know. Where is it where is it to get rid of it? I'm gonna help you out. We'll, we'll come we'll come together and give your ego a big spanking and kick it out. Where is the ego? Where do you find it? I don't know. I think that everything I do and think it's the ego during the day. Okay. But where well this thing that is making you suffer is gotta be somewhere. I where don't suffer. It? Well, you say it's bothering you. No, I just want to become the... <laughs> you want to become free from it. Okay, yeah. so we're, we're changing the words. You want to yeah, get rid I of the... Have... I, I don't know but... now what to say. I don't have any example or something. So... Okay, then just stay with me. Just be here with me for a minute, okay? All right. So you're saying that this ego is bothering you and you want to get rid of it. Because if it doesn't bother you, you don't want to get rid of something that's not bothering you. Obviously, it's creating some disturbances. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and obviously you can't relocate it because it doesn't have a location. So then it's, would you be, would you agree that it's safe to say that it's a thought? Yeah. Right. Okay. So this ego is a thought, correct? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So now what happens to it when you're not thinking? Nothing is not there. It's I not guess. there. I guess, yeah. Yeah, so let's try it again. Close your eyes and just simply in this moment, bring your attention to one point, whether here or here, wherever. Just be attentive to this moment. Bring your attention inwards. Follow, if that's difficult, then do this. Follow the stream of your thoughts back into the source, where they come from. Where do they come from? 
Where do your thoughts come from? Yeah, I don't know. This I couldn't do. Okay. So, but can you just look at your thoughts? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Here, just, just stay with me. Don't go away. So you're looking. Well, what are you hearing anything or seeing anything or it's quiet generally? It's quiet now. Okay. Right. So there's no thoughts. No. Okay. Now what's there then? It, it's it's nothing. It, it's you, correct? Yeah, but who is it? Me. Yeah, but but hold on. It's you. You're here, and you're aware. Just stay there. Don't get out. Just stay there. You you are here. You're available, and you're present. So in this state that you're in right now, is it effortless or you have to put effort into it? It's effortless. Correct. Very good. This is who you are. It's your natural state. You're just being yourself. Now we can create a story. So now imagine that there's this monster hanging around your head, around you, and it's called ego. Imagine it. And this monster is always disturbing you. Can you do that? I see a monster. I don't see it around my head because I don't know where my head is, like in my right. closing right. eye, you know, so. But you can just, in your imagination, you can create something, right? Yeah. Exactly. But so you create something, something not good, not pleasant, something ugly. Can you create that? Yes. Okay. It's there. It's there. All right. But are you still you with the presence of this monster, this ugly thing? Or you're something else? It's still me. Right. So what can it do to you? Well, nothing. Nothing. Exactly. So this ego you're speaking of is simply a thought. When you fall back into yourself, your original yourself, Susanna, and you're here, but you're not engaged with your mental state or your emotional state, there's nothing. You are here course and the world is here but everything is calm and quiet yeah now i have example i got it but you know if you need to make a decision and you don't know which decision to make how do you know that it's not the ego or the fear talking if i decide one way Okay. No, right. All the way. Okay. Great. That sounds good. So how about if we eliminate that? So how about if we replace what you said, right? What you said, we're going to replace that. Let's say you have no choice in your life. Anything you decide, including being indecisive, is 
your destiny. Anything you decide is exactly what you were meant to decide. It was already written in the book of your life. Anything. Oh. We're playing a game. You don't have to agree with me, okay? We're just, we're just two kids having a good time with each other. So we're playing a game. So the game is that anything you decide is was already written. It was exactly what you were supposed to do. Just say, okay, I, I agree to it for now, just for the sake of the game, okay? Mm. All right, you agree? Yeah, I yeah? agree. Yeah, okay, good. So now bring that question again that you brought it. When I should make a decision and I don't know if, if I made it out of fear or like if right. I right, right. So now that question exists anymore because we're playing this game that any decision you make, it's already written. It's already decided before. So now you're making decisions. So whichever direction you decide, is it was already decided. Okay. So can you make the wrong decision now? No. No. <laughs> it, the wrong the, the wrong decision disappears. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I forgot that I don't need to have the responsibility because somebody uh, decide for me actually. Not somebody, the, God. The thing, the thing or, is, or exist. The thing is, is every day we make choices. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Every decision that we make in our lives, in the moment you're making a decision, any decision it is. Let's say. I'm deciding, this is like on an extreme side, okay? I'm deciding I'm going to marry this, this woman. So I decided I found my girl and I'm going to marry her, okay? Yeah. Now, what is my intention in marrying this lady? Are you going to marry somebody with the intention that things are going to turn to be a disaster. When you want to marry someone, are you thinking, I'm going to marry this guy. I'm hoping one day I walk into my bedroom and I'm really hoping he's having sex with my best friend. That's, I'm hoping that happens. And that's why I'm marrying him. Or... You are marrying someone with the intention of having a wonderful life together. Well, what is the intention when you get married? You get well, married I'm to... Hoping, yeah. Yeah? You're hoping what? For the good, uh, not hoping, but you believe in, in the good, uh, like right. positive outcome, positive. right? Exactly, right. So every time you make a decision in your life, your intention of that decision okay. is your, whatever decision you're making, whatever it is, you're going to buy a car or you're going to move somewhere or you're going to go to a pizzeria instead of going to a Chinese restaurant. Your intention is the best thing for you. And you're making that decision based on whatever information is available to you, the highest level of intelligence which is available to you, you're making a decision based on what's available to you. So you make a decision. But the results are not always positive or the way you want them to be. Yeah. 
We, I make a decision to marry this woman because I want to have a great life with her. But do married people, when married, they always have a good life? Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes you have a great life for four or five years, then it turns to be a disaster. Or you invest into something and you buy some stocks. You're not thinking of buying stocks with the intention that you lose your life savings. You're buying the stocks, hoping you're going to make money. But do you always, is it always going positive? No. So in every given moment, when you're making a decision, that decision that you're making is based on the highest intelligence that's available to you. You're making the best decision you can in a moment based on what information is available to you. You cannot make a decision outside of that. Now, it may go your way, it may not go your way. And that's what life is. So if it doesn't go your way, you can't beat yourself up later because you've made a bad decision. That's how life is. You made your decision based on the information was available to you. What happens after is universe. Uh, Sean, so I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I'm trying to un unmute you. Uh, Dudier, a gentleman with beard. <laughs> Hi, how do you pronounce your name? I'm sorry. <laughs> Schwan, Schwan. Schwan. Where, and where are you from? Venezuela. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Um, I met you years ago in Sweden, and you were talking about the silence. Okay. Uh, and I was experiencing uh, the power of silence. And I wanted to talk to you or hear from you more about the power of silence and the benefits that we uh, reach when we practice silence without any inputs, without to know what time it is, with, without know which day it is. And, okay. and how that can really help us to connect in with something higher. Yes, that's a great one. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you interview me at, at the expo? Yes. Did we, we had an interview together, right? Yeah, yeah. We have, oh, a, yeah. Okay. We have a lunch. Right, now I remember. With my yeah. tall girlfriend. Yes, now I, I, now I remember. This was yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably 2015 or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice to see you again. The same, the summer, the same. The, what happens is actually very simple. When you're not thinking, when you learn how to go beyond the mind. Now, I'm not saying like every moment of your life you're not thinking. So you don't want to go beat yourself up over that. But you learn how to disconnect from your mind by simply observing by connecting and identifying with the observer, the one who is aware of the mind. So as this shift happens, your attention goes in that direction towards the observer, who you are. Then the mind becomes irrelevant. It's a stream of thoughts that's passing by and it doesn't have a grip on you. So now your attention shift into silence. You recognize and you're focused on yourself, which is the being. You are, without mind activities, 
what are you? You're here mm. and you're just present, but there's no mind activities. So what happens is the moment that this connection takes place, simultaneously, immediately, you experience expansion. You experience the truth of who you are. Because that engagement with the mind and the thoughts, it creates this sense of separation, that you're separated. But when you disconnect from it, you become the one, the oneness. So the entire process of awakening or enlightenment, it can just happen like this into the recognition of the space that you are in recognizing that you're the vast space and there's nothing you need to really do for it. It's not an activity. It's not something that we need to do, meditate or work on ourselves or to do chanting or to be a good human being. And none of these things. It's just a moment that you disconnect from the world of the mind the thoughts, and you fall back, then you are awake, you're completely that, you're enlightened, you're one. The problem is that, number one, most people don't believe this. When I say it to them, it's as simple as that. The mind comes and says, no, no, it can't be that easy. So now the mind is back and creates that separation. Two is they may experience it by pulling back, which we've did it earlier today and we've done it many, many times. We pull back and your complete expansion. Normally the, the person is expecting a big bang. Something really huge must happen because I heard about the stories of different saints becoming enlightened. So we're expecting an event, but it's not an event. It's just super simple. Hmm. It's, it's so simple that the mind will come and create an issue. Any moment that you're separating yourself from it means you're quiet and there's no thoughts. Yeah. You're completely one with everything. You go back into the thoughts, duality appears. Yeah. I feel that we're going too much uh, into a concept, wrong, right, and uh, actually everything is is uh, for me. What, what I uh, realize now, more and more, is is really an illusion. We create this illusion. We create the illusion of ego. We create the illusion of everything because that in the in the silence. And I remember when you was talking about that in, in Sweden. Uh, and and I, I started to explore more you know, and went to a retreat to be alone by myself for one month in, in the forest. And I said, wow, wow, the, the thoughts, the, the, the activity of the, no ego, no, nothing. It's, it's, then you, you connected with that. And I wanted to, yeah, to, to hear you again about yeah. that after my experience. Yeah. It's so simple, how do you say? It's so simple. And we create the the complications. Yeah, you know, my teacher used to say this. This was like 30 years ago. And uh, obviously I had to wait, you had to go through whatever I had to go through for 30 years before I realized it. He kept pointing out to this place, but it's just, it's just, I couldn't accept it. I didn't think it would be this simple, but it is. 
There's another thing is a way of saying is like, the more you're quiet, the more in this place, the more you pull back and you just simply fall into your natural state. Or what I'm saying about natural state is you don't have to put any effort in breathing. Breathing is naturally happening. You don't have to put any effort in watching. You look around, assuming that you, you're able to see. Uh, you don't need to have to put any effort. If you're hungry and you pick up a pizza, a piece of pizza, you don't have to do anything about it. You just eat. So, and if you look at the nature, none of the vegetations or the animals are putting any effort into being. There simply are. Mm -hmm. You know, day turns to night, night turns to day, seasons turn into each other. Not, nothing is putting an effort into making something happen. Our natural state of being, whatever you do during the day, the simple stuff, if you pay attention to it, like right now you're hearing me speaking. Do you have to put an effort in hearing me? No, you're simply interested and you're listening. Its existence is operating through you. The entire existence is operating through each and every one of us with all these basic, simple functions. That is a state of enlightenment. But for us humans, the thought comes. And the thought comes and creates something that doesn't exist. It's that's out of lack of education because we were not educated from day first. No one taught us anything like that. Everything we've been taught from childhood is that in order to reach happiness, equilibrium, and peace, we have to acquire objects. I got to get rich, I got to be smart, I got to look good, I got to get the girl, I got to get make more money. I have to be a model son or citizen for everyone to be happy or accept me or love me. So I'm getting trained and brainwashed that everything is coming from the outside. Nobody from my ch childhood is teaching me that in the state of presence of just simply being, I am complete, I am whole. I am one with God. So civilization conditions you, it crookeds, it turns things around to project happiness, peace, love, it's something you have to go get. So everything starts being screwed up and it spirals in that direction. Then we come to this teaching. The majesty, the guru, the self somehow appears in your life in some way. And then this information starts to come. And then now the process of undoing, deconditioning a way of being for 30, 40, 50, 60 years starts to take place. Now we're just learning to simply be, being ourselves, being here. And when I first started at this, our academy, everything was just simply be here, be now, be here now. Now what happens is 
you disconnect from the world of the mind and you're just here, all of a sudden, tremendous amount of power comes, tremendous amount of, it's an expansion. It's like an explosion takes place. Because what happens is just simply being here, being quiet. Something gets activated. A natural grid gets activated. Something awakens. And when you feel this bliss or this power, and we're saying it's coming from silence, of activation of an energy field of a space that's already here through being quiet to being silent. It means by disconnecting from the world of the mind, we're falling back into the presence. Pronounce your name for me one more time. Schwan. Schwan. All right, great. And where in Venezuela do you live? No, I, li I live in Europe since almost 20 years. Okay. And I, yeah, I, I was living in, in Sweden and moving around in different places. Different places. Living the good life, huh? I try. <laughs> <laughs> Simple life. <laughs> Simple life. Well, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I, yeah. I saw I saw the yeah the call. The call. And here. Yeah. And I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Nice seeing you again. Welcome to join us anytime you feel like it. Thanks. Thanks. I, I will. Great. Yeah. Nice to hear you. Well, thank you. Well, Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, Happy New Year in case um, I don't talk to you. Hopefully we'll get together next year. Um, regarding our next academy, I'm not sure if uh, the next one is going to be, what is the date? I don't have my calendar here. Um, when would be, what's the date of the next Wednesday? Is it, I haven't checked any, anyone looking? No, let me look. I'm gonna look into the calendar here. Um, I'll make an announcement if we're going to have an Academy next Wednesday or not. Most probably, I'm not really sure. I was thinking about taking a short break but uh, I'm going to put it out. And uh, if I'm here in Los Angeles, for sure, I'm going to have it. If I'm not in town, then we will uh, have it in two weeks. Okay. Nice to see you all. Uh, have a safe uh, holiday. Do the right thing. You're, you know what to do. And don't fall into the trap that we talked about. Stay in your center and just trust that Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the Grand Spirit runs the show. She is the boss, okay? So don't fall into any stories that somebody's going to do something to you and blah, blah, blah. Just know that God is in control. The creator has created the creation. And this creation is his, her responsibility. It's not ours. You just stay in your center. And that's all you have to do. And everything else will be taken care of. Stay in, in your heart, in the love that you have. Don't fall into the fear. Stay in your center. This is your presence. And nothing in the existence can touch that. 
Nothing can touch the truth of who you are. And you are the I am. I am has always been here. It was never born and it will never die. The presence, the I am, is always here. And you are that. So there's nothing to be afraid of or worry about. You just stay in this place. That's where the power, the love is. Namaste. Thank you very much. Thank you for being in my life. You bring a lot of light to my heart. I really appreciate it. I feel the love. I'm very grateful. And I look forward to our next meeting. Love you very much. God bless.